you clicked on the video for five simple activities and uh, just so you're not wondering if this is clickbait, you're gonna get Traffic Lights, Group Anthem, What So What, Now What, 3H Debrief, and Talk To Tomorrow AI chatbot forms mm. of team building activities. Very cool, all free and accessible to everybody. Let's get into it. There is no learning without reflection. Now, and this is true, like if you've got a group of people who need to learn to be productive, get along, and all those other things, then there needs to be forms of reflection. And that's what this is all about. And it's really hard to build a team without that same reflection. And here's an example. Many teams that I've been a part of at some point have had a happy hour. Hey everybody, it's Friday, we're gonna end work an hour early, or we're just gonna continue work on with a happy hour. Now, some people will leave that happy hour thinking, oh, I love this team, this was so fun, I feel so energized. And some people will think, I hope it's a long time until the next one, <laughs> because I feel exhausted and I feel like I just unpaid worked for another hour. The difference between the two experiences yeah. and creating one shared experience that actually builds a team is reflection and debrief. And so that's why we're blending this idea yeah. in this video. We're gonna share five team building activities that are also really brilliant debriefs. So mm -hmm. any experience that you might be having, whether it's just the group spent the day together or the groups had a tough meeting together, or you had a tough conversation with the entire team or something is changing in the organization, these debrief techniques just give an active way and a compelling way to build your team while also learning and developing. Yeah, and it's active. Part of the reason often this stuff is boring or unengaging is that they just rely on let's form a circle and whip around. So it's gonna be active. Number one out of the five that we're gonna share with you, traffic light debrief. You think traffic lights, what colors do you think? Uh, red, green, and yellow. yellow. Okay, there are a variety of ways in which you can engage a group with this particular reflection activity. It might be as simple as having three different colored corners and that you move your group between each of those three different corners to identify those things you want from that experience you're reflecting on that you want to keep, that is, go with, those things that aren't working so well and want to stop. And then there's always a few things that the group has to decide, is this working for us or not? Kind of somewhere in between. You might literally move your group between those three areas and it, it's useful because you're actually involving people's bodies and you're also providing context for each place you go to. Another very quick variation of that is to fill a bag with lots of yellow, green, and red items. Work it around the group. They randomly pull out an item and they've got to think, oh, I've got yellow. Okay, I've got to think of something that relates to not sure if this is working or not, or red or green, of course. You may have learned the unactive, less engaging version of this, start, stop, continue. That's just all a verbal conversation. What do you want to start doing? What do you want to stop doing? What do you want to continue doing? This just adding uh, some visuals, corners of the mm -hmm. room that represent the traffic light metaphor, increase the chances that people will actually remember it, yeah. make it a little bit more novel and intriguing and engaging, uh, but still facilitate really purposeful conversations that move the group forward. And this is part of team building. Is like, you don't want to end team building in the same place that you were. Yeah. And so start, stop, continue immediately allows the group to make edits and changes that move the group forward. And the most powerful tools are those which your group can actually be feeling empowered to use themselves. So it might mm. be in the next meeting they're discussing, ah, that's a red idea. You know, it, it, it's, we should stop doing that. Or it's green or it's yellow. So you can take that tool with you other places. At the risk of making this long, um, one other variation, if you're virtual, get into gallery view, ask everybody to go grab a yellow, red, and green object. Mm. And then if you wanna vote, I call it colorful polls. You just have people hold up their object to the camera, and all of a sudden the whole gallery view will turn mostly red, mostly green, and you get a really quick visual sense of how to proceed. So it's a great consensus building exercise as well, which if you're building a team, gathering consensus quickly and visually in a fun, light way can be useful. Um, activity number two is my absolute favorite closing or debrief exercise. I have led it hundreds of times. Thank you to Mr. Nate Folan, a beautiful facilitator in New Hampshire. And it really simply is asking the group to come up with closing statements. The catch is that the closing statements with, must begin with one of these three phases. We have to clear some space for the three phrases. Uh, it's either I am, I believe, or I will. You're going to give the group 30 seconds to say, all right, considering the experience you've just had, spend 30 seconds and come up with one closing statement that you would love to share with this group. The catch is it must begin with I am, I believe, or I will. And then 
you prompt the group to begin sharing and just popcorning out answers in any order that they would like. Now, set the tone for no, thank you, this has been really nice, blah, blah. No, 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 just begin immediately. The anthem part is I just begin immediately with I am, I believe, and say that statement with conviction. And it is amazing how powerful editing the group's cadence of sharing like that. Yeah. It starts to feel like a thing yeah. rather than just uh, like ending a meeting or gathering in a mm. fizzle. Yeah, and it's powered by that first word, I. You own it. You're like This is something that's going on for you, so you can be accountable for it. And it really starts you to think and reflect what's going on for you for that to be true. I have not had this exercise flop. <gasps> the Fra chances of it flopping for you are... Zero. Zero percent? <laughs> <laughs> Take it to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> what is the third activity? Ooh, well, that's actually the first word. When I was starting out green, wet behind the ears as a facilitator, um, I really needed a framework that I could use that was simple mm -hmm. and quick that would help my groups reflect. But I needed something that also was sequenced, that actually built up my group to be prepared to share. And I'm gonna give you this model that many people know, but surprisingly, how, many often, how often do we share this? And a lot of people put their hands up saying, nope, never heard this before, maybe this is you. The first part is the what. Start with a what type question. And one of my favorite go-to questions is, what did you notice? What did you notice? It's all about observation. You want to pull out the facts. They're cold and hard and often very easy to share. You may not always agree, but that's part of getting the facts out because everyone may see the situation differently. Then it, more, it sort of moves into the next step, which is the so what. Notice there's a cadence here, what, so what. And this is about understanding the meaning and the interpretation mm. of the facts. You're now making this make sense. So it starts with observations. Now you're starting to bring some meaning to what you're talking about. The final step where you really bring it home is the now what. What, so what, now what. The now what is action goal oriented. You know, what have you learned from this experience in this reflection that you can take somewhere? And there's so many ways in which each of those three questions can be manifest. So you could take any of the other strategies we're sharing in this mm. video and apply the what, so what, so what, now what uh, technology to your work. So it gives you something really simple. It doesn't have to be very long, but you have some confidence and ease by using a really, really simple framework. You know, Kate, my wife, is a mm. labor and delivery nurse. And in a lot of jobs, uh, there's not a lot of space for debrief. Or it feels like that. You go from one crisis to the next, one fire to the next, mm -hmm. and you're constantly moving. And so the idea of having the luxury of like sitting down and chatting is uh, unrealistic for some people. And so that's why I love what got so, or what, <laughs> I, there's a frame also, what got so what, which involves <laughs> feeling, but what so what, now what, um, just gives a simple, very quick framework mm -hmm. that you can say, even if you're a labor and delivery nurse and your shift is ending and you're handing off paperwork to somebody else, you can say, hey, you know, now that was intense. What do you want to do differently tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And so just having the what, so what, now what gives you a memorable framework mm -hmm. to get a full spectrum debrief mm -hmm. quickly. Yep. Notice Mark Frame Traffic Lights, uh, Group Anthem had three phrases. Mm -hmm. What, so what, now what has three phrases. So you could actually invite the group to also do their debrief in three parts of the room. Mm -hmm. So it could be, hey, if you want to debrief just what happened and what you noticed, go over here. If you want to talk about meaning making and like really think deeply, get a little philosophical, if you will, come over to this corner. And if you're like, hey, I'm busy, I got to get down, I got to figure out what are we going to do about this? <laughs> now what? Go over, over into this corner. And so you give options for people to move yep. into the space yep. and debrief how they need to in that moment. Yeah. Chad, guess what? How many parts the next one has? Three. <laughs> the magic number three. Who planned this video? Uh, look, so many variations. I'm hoping you don't have to take what we're sharing exactly as we share it but be inspired to create something from what we're sharing. This is the 3H reflection or 3H uh, debrief. Head, head, heart, heart hand. hand. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's got structure. There are three parts to it. And you might start by just sharing with a partner to begin with, um, but it might also be something that you feel comfortable that everyone can just share to the large group. Your choice, you know your group better than us. So the head stuff is like the logical, the thinking, you know, all of that headstrong thoughts, knowledge, action plans. The heart, heart-centered. It's more related to feelings. It's more about how, uh, you how things occur for you. 
you can understand the difference between the head and the heart. And the last one is the hand. It's the more practical. You know, what's the practical nature of what you're trying to reflect on? So you might invite through that experience, the three H's, the head, the heart, and the hand. And what are the different contexts for all those things that you've learned out of that experience? It's easy to talk about inclusion of people and inclusion of ideas. Some people lean a little bit more yeah. left brain, logical, rational, data focused. And some people lean a little bit more heart, story, emotion, feeling, etc. And so when you debrief in this way, um, it allows for everybody to have a voice in the meeting. I used to lead in a, a more extended, dedicated uh, exercise where we'd have people grow, uh, draw a Venn diagram ah. on a huge piece of flip chart mm. paper. So every individual had a giant piece of uh, flip chart paper with a giant Venn diagram mm. labeled head, heart, hands in the middle. Mm. And uh, it was kind of a guided journaling. We'd give them a bunch of prompts to think about what they're uh, thinking yeah. about. We'd give them a bunch of prompts uh, to cue up what they're feeling and how that experience was. And then in the middle, what do you want to do about it um, afterward? And mm -hmm. so another way, if, you, if you're visual and you want to do that on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper at a meeting, go for it. We save the most technologically advanced for last. Uh, for those of you who uh, have played with any artificial intelligence, chat GPT, generative AI tools, mm. you know, you give the, the system a prompt. So uh, give me the answer to the universe and it will spit something back <laughs> out at you, right? All my work is focused around how to help people ask powerful questions. I think it's one of the most useful tools to actually help people build teams. If you equip people with the skill mm. of how to ask questions and you reward curiosity, mm. they will build themselves up as a team because they'll consistently know more about each other, mm. how to communicate, mm. norms, mm. preferences, etc. Mm. And so I hired a group of developers to create the exact opposite of ChatGPT, this uh, what I call talk to tomorrow AI bot. Mm. And so um, the idea is that the conversations we have fundamentally uh, one word at a time actually talk us into tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The job that you currently have, you have because of a conversation, right? The person that you are married to or not married to any longer or whatever else, <laughs> all happen because of a conversation, right? Our conversations actually shape what happens next. So if you just go to talkwithtomorrow.com, there's no email sign up registration, it's all uh, free. It gives you a chat bot that actually has the powers of artificial intelligence give an individual debrief for everybody. Because it's like a conversation, isn't it? Exactly, so, it's, so right away, the first question I ask you is what part of your future would you like to reflect on? Mm -hmm. So you might say, oh, I'm considering retiring soon. What it's gonna do is, is read your answer and then ask you a thoughtful question as if a thoughtful coach or mentor would. Mm. And what's beautiful about this in a group, especially a large group, if you've got 100 people, mm. the best way to debrief would be to hire a professional, 100 professionals to come in and one-on-one -on -one debrief people's experience to maximize their own learning and development. Mm. Costly and impractical. Mm. So this is send everybody to talkwithtomorrow.com uh, and just invite everybody into a five minute dialogue with themselves back and forth. And it is remarkable how deep this can get for people and how thought provoking this mm. can get for people. And then the magic is once they've had their AI moment, get into small groups and share their insights and learnings from that conversation. And the beauty of that, large groups, well maybe just two people. It's a great way to invite that reflection. How rude of us. We didn't even say hello. Um, I'm Chad Littlefield. I'm Mark Collard. I'm the founder of uh, We and Me, creator of this connection toolkit, a whole bunch of physical tools to help make connection easy and engaging and interactive with your group. And Mark's the digital side of this. Yeah, I'm the founder of Playmio.com. We're a massive online database of all the group games and activities out there that help people connect. Video tutorials, step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, you'll never be short of activity ideas ever again. There's a ridiculous amount of free stuff, uh, just a link away right below. Thank you for spending some cyberspace with us. Have an awesome day.